Today I will talk about uh, a joint work done with Andrea Clementi from the University of Rome uh, Tor Vergata, Giorgia Copis from uh, Inria Ren and Emanuele Natale from uh, Inria Sofia Antipoli. Uh, the title of the work is uh, on the search efficiency of uh, parallel levy walks on Zeta 2. So first of all, what are levy walks? Uh, here I put two pictures. On the right, the well-known Brownian motion in which uh, uh, a walker goes around and explores the nearby area. And on the left, a simulation of a levy walk. As you can see, the levy walk has a faster diffusion than the Brownian motion. And uh, also, it tends to visit less already visited sites. Informally, a levy walk is a random walk whose step length density distribution is proportional to a power law, namely the um, uh, the density uh, that the step length uh, is d is uh, proportional to 1 over d to the alpha, where alpha is some fixed constant uh, strictly greater than 1. Uh, it has to be strictly greater than 1 since the integral of uh, 1 over d to the alpha should be finite to be a probability density distribution. Um, and why do we study Levy, Levy walks? Why are they interesting? Um, many articles in biology uh, show how levy walks are used to, mo to model movement patterns. There are here some examples. I, re I wrote uh, bacteria, uh, termite rats, fishes. Uh, here I put uh, the picture of uh, Australian desert uh, ants, a variety of mollusks. And now I will show you some uh, a little video that has been uh, recorded for an article in Science appeared in 2011 of muscles performing uh, levy walks. Uh, should it should start right now? Yes, I hope you see it. This is a muscle performing uh, what can be seen as uh, a levy walk. In indeed, uh, uh, the path covered. Um, as a fast diffusion and it doesn't cover already, already visited sites, or not, so, not too often at least. Okay, maybe it's, it's enough, but I hope it, it, uh, it was fun. And, and levy walks uh, are studied in the theory of foraging. Of foraging. Uh, the scenario is the following. There is a density distribution rho in uh, Rn describing food locations. And there is an, an uninformed walker searching for food uh, in Rn. He doesn't know the locations of the food. For example, here, this man looking for slices of pizzas, but he doesn't know where the slices are located. And the task, the question, is uh, which strategy maximizes the expected food discovery rate? Uh, what is the expected food discovery rate? It's simply the, um, the number of uh, food locations that have been discovered divided by the time uh, ne necessary to discover them. And there is an important paper appeared in Nature in 1999 that analyzes three random search strategies that lead to uh, normal diffusion, ballistic diffusion, and super diffusion. Uh, to explain better myself, normal diffusion is the one we, we would obtain from the simple random walk or the well-known Brownian motion, as I said in the beginning of the presentation. The ballistic diffusion is the one we would obtain from a straight straight walk in which uh, the, the walker performs just a straight path. And the super diffusion is something in between A and B. We will see that the levy walk uh, depending on the parameter alpha defi uh, that defines the power low density distribution, uh, we line uh, each of these uh, uh, three kind of diffusions. Uh, indeed, uh, um, recalling that the density distribution of the step length is uh, proportional to 1 over d to the power of alpha, uh, if alpha is uh, at least 3, the levy walk has a normal diffusion. I just give an idea uh, of uh, of uh, why this happens in one dimension and for alpha strictly greater than three, it's it's very easy. Indeed, uh, there is a there is the finite step length variance. Uh, it's just the integral of uh, one over 
x to the alpha times x square, it turns to be uh, the integral of uh, 1 over x to the alpha minus 2. And this is finite since uh, alpha minus 2 is uh, strictly greater than 1. And from the central limit theorem, then uh, the long-term position of the walk uh, is a Gaussian distribution. And that is exactly the same that uh, holds for the Brownian motion. This is a known result. And indeed, uh, in the picture, you can see a simulation of a Levy walk uh, choosing the parameter alpha to be equal to 3. And this is very similar to, to a Brownian motion. On the other hand, um, if alpha is between 1 and 2, the Levy walk has a ballistic diffusion. Uh, this time, uh, there is uh, an infinite step length expectation. Uh, indeed, it turns out to be the integral of 1 over x to the alpha minus 1. Uh, alpha is uh, between 1 and 2, and so alpha minus 1 is uh, at most 1. And we know that this integral uh, is infinite. And, and thus, in expectation, uh, just one step brings the walker to distance t in time t on average. And the same holds for the ballistic walk. This is trivial. Uh, the ballistic walk goes uh, straight. And here you, uh, you can see uh, three simulations of the Levy walk uh, for the parameter alpha that goes uh, towards 1, decreases uh, towards 1. And you see when alpha is equal to 1.5, uh, the Levy walk appears to be almost a straight line. And the closer alpha is to 1, uh, the more similar it will be to a straight, uh, a straight uh, path. Um, in the end, when alpha is uh, between 2 and 3, the Levy walk has this super diffusion that is somewhere in the middle between the normal diffusion and the ballistic diffusion, in which uh, there is a finite step length expectation and at the same time an infinite step length variance. And yeah, here I, I put the picture of uh, such a such a, a Levy walk with uh, alpha between two and three. And the paper in Nature uh, takes into account uh, two different uh, settings. Uh, the the first one is the setting in which the food locate the food regenerates once found. This is called a non-destructive foraging. And the second one. Um, takes into account uh, those scenarios in which the food uh, does not regenerate once found. This is called destructive forage, foraging. And the result, they try to maximize the expected food discovery rate, uh, and they say they state that the walker should perform. Um, the Levy walk with exponent alpha equal to 2 in the case of non-destructive foraging, so when the, the food uh, appears again once found, and the ballistic walk for destructive uh, for foraging. 
and they also say that uh, non-destructive foraging is uh, the more the more realistic uh, hypothesis and um, and so they formulate this uh, uh, hypothesis of the optimality of the levy work as random search strategies indeed the same authors in another in another uh, paper appeared in physics of uh, uh, life reviews uh, formulate this uh, levy fl le levy flight foraging hypothesis in, in which they say that uh, levy flights or walks with exponent alpha equal to two um, since they optimize random searches then biological organisms must have therefore devolved to exploit levy flights or levy walks a levy flight is just a levy walk in which the walker um, jumps uh, toward the destination without uh, visiting uh, intermediate nodes um, these are some simulation uh, done in the paper appeared in nature in 1999 in which they show how this expected discovery rate uh, reaches its maximum when alpha is uh, is two uh, yeah there there have been um, much uh, many kind of uh, researches on this uh, topic uh, and that takes in, uh, took inspiration from uh, this levy flight foraging hypothesis but uh, we actually failed to find rigorous mathematical treatment of these claimed uh, results and indeed uh, an article appeared in physical review letters uh, this year claims that uh, the results uh, of nature 1999 do not apply in dimension d that is, that is at least true uh, so also the, the plane the two dimensional uh, plane which is a real a, rea uh, a realistic scenario thus questioning the validity of the levy flight foraging hypothesis. Uh, furthermore, the levy walk has never been studied in the discrete setting. And so, um, and so uh, we, we, we propose to do so. Uh, in which uh, setting? The setting is the one of the ANS problem. The ANS problem was uh, first introduced by Amos Korman and co-authors in uh, POTC in 2012. Uh, with the name of Ants Nearby Treasure Search Problem, uh, in which there are K mutually independent walkers uh, that move on Zeta 2 from the origin. Time is uh, synchronous and marked by a global clock. And there is just one special node uh, that I call P in Zeta 2, the treasure, which is a Manhattan distance cell from the origin. The, the task, the question is, uh, which strategy is the best one to find the treasure? Uh, best one according to what? Uh, we will find out in a while. Um, just some preliminaries. Um, we, we, we denote by step a move that takes one time unit and by BDO view, the set of nodes of Zeta 2 that have Manhattan distance at most D from you. It's just the ball of, radi of radius D uh, centered in you. In Zeta, in Zeta Chu, the ball is, is more like a rhombus. And, and we give the definition of this uh, efficiency measure we call uh, work. And K agents moving for T steps make a work equal to K times T. For example, in the picture I put here, we have three ants moving uh, independ independently one from each other. And the work they, made, they make is just the, the total path that is covered by the 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 three of them and there is a lower bound on this uh, efficiency measure to find uh, the treasure uh, from a result uh, in the paper by Amos Korman and co-authors in from POTC 2012 we get the following lower bound if we locate uh, the treasure uniformly at random in one node in the ball of radius cell centered in the origin then for any number of agents and for any search algorithm a the work required to find the treasure is omega of l square both with constant probability and in expectation the proof is uh, is simple indeed uh, the cardinality of this ball is l square I, there is a picture of the ball here on the on the right corner uh, we set the time t to be l square uh, divided by 4 times uh, k, where k is the number of walkers, and we let the process run for time t. Uh, what happens is that within time 2t, at most 2kt 
uh, nodes are covered since we have k walkers and, and within time 2t they can cover at most 2kt nodes 2kt uh, uh, is equal to l, uh, l squared uh, half and so uh, since the treasure is located uh, uniformly at random in the ball there is probability at least one half that the treasure is not found within time 2t since the ball has cardinality of, uh, of equal to l square and so the first claim is uh, is proved for the second claim if we call h the random variable denoting the first hitting time for the treasure then the expectation of the work is just uh, the expectation of k times h uh, that is uh, at least uh, uh, 2kt times one half since uh, h this random variable we have said in the previous step that is uh, at least one half uh, within time 2t sorry sorry it's uh, at least uh, 2t uh, with probability at least one half and, and so this expectation is uh, at least uh, L square over four. And we have also the second uh, claim of the lower bound. And in the paper in pod C, the authors propose uh, a search algorithm which is almost optimal and natural. Natural in the sense that takes inspiration from uh, uh, behaviors uh, that are not typical in biology. And I put this picture here to represent what I'm, I'm going to, to explain formally uh, in a while. The algorithm is called the harmonic search algorithm. And if we fix alpha to be greater than one, then uh, an agent performing this algorithm following, follows the, these instructions. First, it samples a levy jump length, a levy jump length D with probability proportional to one over d to the alpha. It's just the power law distribution that defines the levy, the levy walk. Then in the ballistic diffusion phase, uh, in these steps, it moves to a destination at distance exactly d from the starting node. This destination is chosen uniformly at random. It doesn't matter what, uh, what the path covered actually is, since uh, in this algorithm, the walker is allowed to look for the treasure uh, only in uh, step C. So that it's not important the path uh, it covers in during B. In step C, uh, once reached the destination of B, uh, the worker starts exploring the round area with a spiral search for D to the alpha plus one steps. It's, a, it's what is represented here. The full line is the ballistic jump. And then once reached the destination point of this jump, it starts this uh, dot line that is the spiral search after uh, the spiral search is finished it just returns uh, in the origin and repeats this is one iteration of the harmonic search algorithm and yes i put a remark here the algorithm allows the worker uh, to look for the threshold only during step c not during the ballistic jump as i said and the result um, one of the results of the paper, the, the one that uh, is of our interest uh, as for the levy works, is the following. If we let delta uh, to be, um, to be uh, what uh, one needs to reach alpha, so alpha is one, is one plus delta, uh, with delta stri strictly greater, greater than zero, then uh, the results uh, informally can be stated as follow. The smaller delta, or alpha greater than one, and the better the performance is, the work made by the, the K walkers is big O of L squared plus delta, with probability at least one minus epsilon for any epsilon greater than zero, and K chosen as a function of epsilon times uh, L to the delta. So there is uh, this uh, delta exponent exceeding the lower bound on the work. Indeed, uh, um, I just remind that the lower bound on the work is omega of L square with constant probability. Uh, so the algorithm is almost optimal. Be, uh, it's almost optimal. This delta can be can be made uh, as small as uh, as possible. And in our work, we give uh, the first definition of Levy walk in the discrete setting in zeta two. Uh, we call it the Pareto walk, uh, which is natural and time homogeneous. 
uh, tamimogenous in the sense that um, it doesn't have different phases. Um, and the, we chose the name Pareto walk since uh, the jump length distribution we chose is a power law um, that is a common variant of the Pareto distribution. And so we called it uh, the Pareto walk. And we put ourselves in the ends problem setting introduced uh, by Amos Corman and quarters in 2012, in which there is this special node at Rasher, a distant cell from the origin, and there are K independent agents uh, starting at the origin of Zeta Chu and moving around uh, searching for the treasure. And the task is to minimize the work to find the treasure and to estimate the distribution of the heating time of the treasure, of course. Just a pre some preliminaries, uh, um, we are interested in uh, events that hold with high probability. Um, and, and here's the definition. An event E, depending on a parameter N, holds with high probability with respect to N. If the probability of E is just is at least one minus the inverse on of some polynomial in N, and also we introduced uh, we introduced two notions: the choice of a direction uniformly at random in zeta two. In R two is a uh, there is a question. Maybe I can read it. Several strategies. Okay, when you have several agents searching for the treasure, is it all, uh, are we allowed to have several strategies? Uh, in general, uh, since we are interested in uh, settings uh, of biological uh, relevance, uh, the strategy adopted uh, is uh, can, is the same in our in our scenarios. It's the same for all of the agents. So all agents perform the same strategy. Okay, and I was saying uh, we gave two notions: the choice of a direction uniformly at random in zeta two. It's not obvious in zeta two what is a uniformly at random direction. Uh, in R two, it is ob obvious, more obvious at least. And also the selection of a path that approximates the direction. Um, intuitively, it's the path is something like that. If the direction is uh, um, represented by this dot dotted line, then the path that approximates it is, is this full line here. And this is the representation of what uh, six iterations of the Pareto walk uh, appear to be. And the definition follows. Let alpha uh, greater than one be a real constant. And then each agent uh, performs uh, the following instructions. First, uh, it chooses a distance d uh, with probability c alpha over 1 plus d to the alpha. This is uh, a power law and, the, and it is called the Pareto distribution. Then it chooses a direction uniformly at random and it walks along uh, this uh, uh, direction approximating path for these steps, one edge at a time, 
crossing exactly, exactly the nodes. And then it repeats the procedure. So in this sense, it's time homogeneous. It's always, it always do the same things without different phases. And yes, I just put the remark here that the probability distribution uh, in uh, step A, step A uh, is a non-variant uh, of the Pareto distribution. And here are uh, our results. Um, again, uh, I remind that the lower bound on the work is uh, omega of L square with constant probability. This holds uh, for any uh, search algorithm adopted by the, the agents. Um, and our result is the following up to polylogarithms. For each choice of alpha greater than one, there is just one polynomial value in L for K that, are, uh, that is the number of agents, such that with high probability, the work is equal, exactly equal to L square, thus optimal. Up to, uh, I repeat and I remark, up to polylogarithms. The table summarize, uh, summarizes uh, the, the choice of K uh, for each uh, choice of alpha. Indeed, if alpha is uh, at least three, uh, K should be some polylogarithm. And the heating time of the treasure turns out to be uh, roughly L square. And so the work is roughly L square. Uh, on the other hand, if alpha is between two and three, then the value of K is this polynomial in L that is sublinear. And the heating time is this polynomial in L that is uh, super linear but sub quadratic and the work that is the multiplication between these two values is roughly as l square up to polylogarithms again and uh, if alpha is uh, between one and two then uh, both k and the heating time are let's say roughly l so linear and the work is again l square l uh, sorry yes l is the distance uh, of the treasure from the origin so if the treasure is located in a node that has manhattan distance l from the origin and then we find these values of k uh, as a function of l and uh, alpha of course uh, okay uh can i ask a question yes of course okay um so it's a little bit uh, strange to me that um, you you choose k as a function. I mean, you you the the result you, you don't present uh, the the result as if k is fixed, and then you ask what is the exponent. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Is there a reason for that, or? Uh, okay, so the the main reason is that uh, the function uh, given alpha, I give k. Is uh, is not uh, sur uh, subjective, so it's uh, you cannot real uh, take the inverse of it. So if you have k, it's not uh, so easy to say uh, which alpha is the alpha that uh, gives the optimal uh, optimal work. Okay, but does it exist? Um, so. Uh, with that, if you want uh, the um, the statement to be true with high probability, then uh, it is not too true that for each value of k you have the corresponding alpha. If you just uh, lower the probability, yes, then uh, it is true. Okay, so you are saying, uh, given a certain alpha, the ants choose how many how many ants to go out of the nest to search. Yes, it's an analysis from uh, above. So I see the process, and I can uh, and I can uh, uh, state something about what is going to happen if I see k. Also, but uh, of course you can do also the other thing around. Uh, you fix k, and you try. If you want the work to be exactly equal to L square, then uh, um, not for each k you have uh, the corresponding alpha. But uh, if you want the work uh, to worsen just by a little poly polynomial factor, then uh, yes, you can do it. You okay. take k and you you give uh, the, some alpha, but you lose something uh, uh, at the exponent. Okay, thanks. Uh, yes, the me the measure of optimality is uh, the less work, the better. Of course, yes, because the work measures um, how much 
all the agents have walked uh, across the, the grid, the two-dimensional grid. And any other question is, uh, is welcome. Uh, uh, until that, I go on. And I also put uh, here another graphics that say uh, varying alpha, how the degree of the polynomial of k uh, changes. So when alpha is between 1 and 2, the degree of the polynomial of k is 1. Of course, the, the logarithmic uh, factors uh, change when uh, alpha changes, but not the degree of the polynomial in L. And, and then when alpha goes from 2 to 3, this degree uh, goes linearly from 1 to 0. And then when alpha is uh, at least 3, it stays uh, equal to 0. It keeps uh, 0. And also these results are almost tight in the sense that uh, if we change by a polynomial factor the value of k, uh, then the work uh, worsen by at least uh, a polynomial factor with high probability. So for any given alpha, there is just that polynomial factor that is optimal for k. And at the same time, we prove uh, the following equivalences in terms of work efficiency. So when alpha is at least 3, the, Levy, the Pareto walk uh, has the same work efficiency than the simple random walk. It's exactly the same. And when alpha is between 1 and 2, the Pareto walk uh, has the same work efficiency as the ballistic walk. The two pictures are just a reminder of uh, a Brownian motion in uh, the plane or equivalently a two-dimensional uh, simple random walk and the ballistic uh, straight line walk. I just, uh, we just have some considerations here. In our work, the exponent alpha equal to 2 does not play any crucial role, cru crucial role um, rather than uh, in the paper in Nature from 1999, in which uh, it seemed to be some uh, uh, universal uh, uh, optimality uh, parameter. Uh, of course, the scenario is different. They had a density distribution over the over the plane. We just have one treasure, uh, not infinite, infinitely many treasure. And as I said, for each choice of alpha, in uh, we have uh, some value of k such that the work performed is optimal. And so we. We, we can imagine that the optimal search strategy actually depends on the chosen setting, uh, the environment. So how many food uh, locations we have uh, and, and so on. Now I just give, I will give some details uh, on how we prove uh, the upper bound on the heating time for the work, uh, uh, on the heating time for the super diff diffusive regime. So I just remarked that uh, if uh, alpha is between 2 and 3, the expected jump length of the Pareto walk is constant. Indeed, uh, the expectation will be the harmonic series uh, of uh, proportional to 1 over 1 plus d to the alpha minus 1, but alpha is between 2 and 3, so alpha minus 1 is uh, strictly greater than 1. And we know this value to be finite. And thus, uh, in each jump, uh, the worker visits only a constant number of nodes in expectation. And we don't lose much if we look only at jump destination nodes. Indeed, it's rather difficult to understand uh, uh, which nodes are actually visited during a, a jump of the Pareto walk. And so we define the Pareto flight uh, it's as the Pareto walk in which the agent takes just one step or time unit to reach the jump destination without visiting intermediate nodes. And this turns out to be a Markov chain in, uh, in Zeta 2. Uh, the position at time t depends only on the position at time uh, t minus 1. And we have a coupling result. So if one single Pareto flight finds the threshold within uh, t steps, uh, within time t with probability p of t, conditional on, on an event that uh, limits the jump lengths, all the jumps lengths performed to this value, t log t to the power of 1 over alpha minus 1, then uh, uh, we have also that the Pareto walk finds the threshold within time theta of t with probability at least uh, 
P of t minus this uh, exponential uh, value here. So if P of t is big enough, this uh, this value will be of the same of, of the same order of P of t, P of t itself, and this also without any conditional uh, event. So we reduce to study uh, the heating time distribution for the treasure of the Pareto flight to get the same result on the Pareto walk. And we want to, the, to determine uh, P of t now. And how we do it? Just uh, some notation. P is the treasure and uh, L is uh, its Manhattan distance from the origin. And we, uh, we denote uh, as uh, zeta P of t, the random variable that um, uh, yields the number of visits in P to the treasure until time t. And epsilon of t is uh, the event that the first t jumps are limited. Uh, it's the event necessary to use the coupling result. And a of t is uh, the uh, expected number of visits uh, um, to the origin until 10 t conditional on this event epsilon of t. And we have this uh, this uh, this result. So this. P of t, the probability to find the treasure within time t, conditional on the event epsilon of t, is at least the number, the expected number of visits to the treasure until time t, divided by the expected number of visits to the origin until time t. And we now want to 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 estimate these two values. To get the first one, so the expected number of visits to the treasure until time t, uh, we partition uh, zeta 2 in three areas in the following way. Uh, you see a1 is, is basically the, the square on whose border the, the treasure is located. Here, p is the treasure. So the square will have uh, the border equal to 2l, this 2l. Then a2 is a ball centered in the origin. Uh, as I said before, the ball in zeta 2 is a rhombus, and with radius uh, that is a polylogarithmic factor bigger than L. And A3 is uh, all the rest, all the rest. Here, the, the formal expression of these three sets. Uh, these three sets have uh, intersection amp. Indeed, uh, as A2, we don't take the, 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 the full ball, but the ball without uh, this, uh, this square. And we do the following observation. So if zeta s of t is the total number of visits in the set s until time t, then of course, a worker that uh, walks uh, for t steps um, visits clearly t nodes, t, differ t nodes, not necessarily different, but uh, t, t nodes, t locations. And thus the expectation uh, of the number of visits to A1 until time t plus uh, that of A2 and that of A3. Uh, since uh, these three regions are uh, have a, uh, empty intersection, but the, un the union of, uh, of uh, all of them is uh, the, the grid itself, then this sum has to be equal to three, two t itself, two t. And we bound these three factors from above. Uh, for some t that is uh, this power or uh, this polynomial in L, L to the power of 1 plus alpha minus 2, remember that alpha is here between 2 and 3, we get these three bounds. And in C, as you can see, the bound in the region A2, uh, it appears uh, the value, the expected number of uh, visits to the treasure until time t here. And so if we substitute uh, B, C, and D in A, we get that um, the expected number of visits to the treasure until time t is uh, an, omega, an omega tilde of uh, 1 over L to the power of uh, 1 minus alpha minus 2. It's just uh, simple math. And now we want to go back to PT. Remember, we still need that is A of T, but it turns out that in the case of the Par of Pareto walk with alpha between two and three, this uh, A, of T, A of T is constant with respect to T, it's just a constant. And so the order of P of T for, for T that is uh, 
this polynomial in L is the same as uh, the, um, the expected number of visits to the treasure until time t. And is this omega tilde of 1 over uh, L to the power of 1 minus alpha minus 2. And the coupling result gives us the same asymptotic bound for the Pareto walk since uh, we should decrease p of t by an exponential value, but uh, uh, since p of t is of a higher order, um, this doesn't change anything, asymptotically speaking. And how do we get uh, high probability? Um, yes, we exploit the independence of the, of the k-walkers. Indeed, uh, if we have k walkers, each of them has probability at least uh, p of t, where, p, where uh, p of t goes to zero whenever t goes to infinity, to find the treasure within time t, with t of this order, then they don't find the treasure within time t with probability for independence, 1 minus p of t to the power of k. And so if we set k to be log l times the inverse of p of t we have the following we have that the probability that at least one walker finds the treasure within time t is uh, one minus one minus p of t to the power of k where k as is this value here and this turns out to be uh, asymptotically equivalent to one minus uh, e to the power of log l, that is exactly 1 minus 1 over l. And so, uh, with high probability, uh, what happens? We, uh, k walkers, where k is uh, this, uh, this value here, uh, equivalently a big O tilde of uh, l to the power of 1 minus alpha minus 2, they find the treasure within time t, where t is uh, this uh, other value here, this other value polynomial in l, uh, and their work will be the multiplication between these two values that is just a big O tilde of L square with high probability. So we have the, this upper bound on the work, and this is the upper bound on the heating time for the treasure in the case uh, of a super diffusive uh, Pareto work. That is when alpha is between uh, 2 and 3. And the lower bound of the work comes from the, the lemma I said uh, at the beginning of, of the talk, that is uh, omega of L square, at least with constant probability. So uh, up to polylogarithms, you cannot do better than this. So just some, uh, some things to, to recap. In, in our work, we provide a definition of a disc discrete version of uh, the Levy walk. Uh, that we call uh, the Pareto walk, and we analyze k, k different Pareto walks independent in the ANS problem setting. The result is that uh, for any choice of alpha greater than one, there is one polynomial value in L uh, uh, for the number of agents k, such that k Pareto walks achieve uh, optimal search efficiency in terms of uh, work efficiency, the, the measure we have given uh, before. We also argue the non-universal optimality of exponent alpha equal to 2, uh, on the contrary of some uh, uh, works uh, in biology. And furthermore, uh, at the same time, we also show some equivalencies that were already known in the continuous setting, uh, that, are, that is that the Pareto work is uh, equivalent, in our case, in terms of uh, work efficiency, again, to the simple random walk when alpha is at least uh, 3, and to the discrete ballistic walk when alpha is uh, between 1 and 2. So thank you for your, for your attention, and I hope uh, you enjoyed the, the presentation. And uh, any question is welcome. Thank you, Francesco. It was a great talk. Thank you. Very clear and uh, interesting. Thank you. Let's see if people have some question. Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Uh, thank you for the talk. It was uh, very clear indeed. Thank um, you. So uh, I'm trying to understand. Uh, you assume that you know the distance to the treasure, roughly? Yes. Oh. 
And if you don't know this, uh... so there um, we we had also this question between ourselves. You um, indeed you can do something like uh, you suppose the value of uh, the treasure L, and you run uh, the uh, you have k agents. You suppose the value L of the treasure, and you run uh, the Pareto work with the corresponding uh, alpha that should be the the um, the um, optimal one and then uh, if you don't find the treasure within the time uh, that is predicted by our work then you can for example double the value of l and we and, and repeating it again and again but then you change the alpha yes of course uh, each time you 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 double the, the l you change the alpha and you have to put of course more worker to work Okay, but at least can you say something about what is the type of approximation that you need for L in order for it, in order to be efficient? Like, do you need a polynomial estimation, a constant approximation? What kind of an approximation will will work uh, nicely? Uh, for for L, uh, approximation for L. Yes. Uh, yes. I didn't think about uh, we didn't think about that and uh, no at the moment I cannot imagine uh, maybe maybe I will guess polylogarithmic but uh, we have to check mm -hmm. yes we have to check okay thanks okay I see that uh, Masha has a question on slide 25, so I go, I go to slide 25. One second. Okay. Here. I'm waiting for the typing. Okay. If I explain it better. Yes, it, it's it's really simple and very technical uh, indeed. Uh, um, but uh, for the space I have here, uh, I can just uh, uh, refer to the online article. The, really, the, the proof is very very simple. It's just the expression of uh, you see these uh, two expectations. If you express them uh, properly, and you will see that uh, it's very easy to show it. Also, the other fact that is uh, behind this uh, this lemma is that uh, the um, the expected number of visits to the treasure is, uh, of course, uh, less than the expected number of visits to the origin for the Pareto flight, since uh, it is a Markov chain. So, if you condition on the first visit to the to the treasure, you have uh, that this value is less. But it's just uh, technicalities, you, you, you can see. OK, can you clarify what is the best exponent for one single agent? OK, for, <laughs> for one single agent, the best exponent is uh, whatever alpha greater than, than 3. It doesn't change uh, almost anything. The uh, I can put again the slide here. Okay. So this is uh, the optimal value of k for alpha greater than three. On the reverse, from our work, you will see that uh, if you have just one agent, then the best thing you can do is to set the exponent uh, alpha to be at least uh, at least three. But you will not have a high probability. Uh, to find the treasure, of course, you will not have it, but you will have uh, a non-negligible probability to find the treasure, where negligible is the complementary of uh, with high probability. Okay. Yeah. Hello, Francisco. I have a question 
on biology. Okay. okay. Do the um, do worms explore in three dimensions, or do they explore only a, a flat surface under the ground surface? You know. Worms, sir. Huh? Yeah. I mean, are there three-dimensional explorations in nature? Yes, of course. Uh, ah, yes, like uh, the question of uh, Michel. Um, yes, of course, there are some uh, some uh, works that say that levee walks are performed also in three dimension. Take uh, the example of uh, fishes, of uh, of bees. Um, this approach may be generalized to dimension higher than three. Of course, the results uh, will change, um, but we didn't try it yet. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, pretty new. Uh, we I just yeah. finished uh, last month to, to do this. Yeah, thank you. OK, you're welcome. I hope uh, this answers also the question of, uh, of Michel. I also have a question about the model. Yes. Uh, so you assume that all the agents were coming from the same region. But yes. What if they come from different, uh, when you have many origins, for instance? OK, yes. Um, it depends on the assumptions you can make. If you know, for example, that uh, they can come from a small area, and that the small area is, uh, let's say, a distance uh, theta of L, from the, the treasure, then uh, you can say pretty much the same uh, on uh, the results. But uh, if the initial region, let's call it the initial region, is uh, something completely random, then the analysis uh, does not hold uh, anymore because uh, you need the assumption on uh, the initial distance from the, from the, from the treasure. Yeah, you're okay with that, yeah. I think it's uh, I think it's the only assumption uh, we make is the initial distance from the from the treasure and the independence of course between the workers. Yeah, okay, I see. Okay, let's see. Yeah, you see Masha is is writing. Masa, Mash, I don't know. And I'm sorry if I pronounce it bad. Ah, if the workers talk together. <laughs> oh, yes, we also thought about that. Uh, so the lower bound on the work um, should be omega over square uh, in the same case. Indeed, uh, the proof uh, uh, we, we showed. Uh, it's not relevant, uh, does not take care on, on the search algorithm uh, you adopt. And indeed, if you, you put the, the, the treasure, I can put the lower bound here. Wait a second. Here. Um, if the treasure is located uniformly at, ran at random here, then uh, no matter what, you need to to cover, um, let's say, a number of nodes that is uh, proportional to L square uh, to find the tre to to be sure to find the treasure with at least a constant probability. Uh, otherwise, you cannot uh, you cannot find uh, you cannot be sure to find it with the constant probability. And so, since the lower bound on the work is uh, L square. Um, you see that the Pareto walk or Levy walks are indeed optimal even if they don't talk, since uh, you reach this this value without uh, without talking. And so, if you talk, you don't uh, you don't gain much. Maybe maybe some polylogarithmic factor on the work. If there was one end that knew where the treasure is, uh, then uh, yes, then the the problem is is very different uh, because uh, 
you, you have to guess if, uh, for example, he can say that the location to the others, uh, it depends on what he can do, this, this one ant uh, that, that knows the location of the treasure. Mm 